welcome back uh, i'm sure you've been loving all the three stories that we've covered so far from quantitative easing to current account deficit to marginal standing facility now it's time that we move on to cover few concepts uh, then the larger stories that we've been doing so this is a short 4 or 5 minute out video where we are going to cover one very important concept that actually came out as an idea when i was reading one of one of the articles where lately it said that one dollar when is quoting at 59 rupees the actual real rate for the currency is close to 65 rupees per dollar uh, i read this i went out of the office i checked with few of my colleagues around asking if they understood what the article actually meant when it said one dollar real effective rate should be close to 65 rupees and majority of them could not answer that that is basically uh, the drive behind designing this particular video so what am i going to cover in this particular video for you all i'm going to cover uh, the difference between the nominal exchange rate okay and the real effective exchange rate now for a lot of you all who are unaware there is obviously a difference between both these things that i'm talking to you about okay so let's try and understand what is nominal exchange rate and let's try and understand what's a real effective exchange rate so what's a nominal exchange rate nominal exchange rate is the market driven rate the rate which is traded so when we say one dollar is today quoting at let's say for example 59 rupees which is traded on the exchange which is market driven this rate is called the nominal rate so all the trades when when an FII comes in to your country uh, sells one dollar he receives 59 rupees all these trades happen at the nominal rate because that's the market driven rate then what's the real effective rate okay so let's let me throw some light on what is the real effective rate say for example uh, Today, one dollar is quoting at 60 rupees. That's the nominal rate that you and me are aware of. Okay. Uh, let's talk about inflation in India. Inflation in India to be close to 10%. Example. And inflation in the US to be 0%. Now, this is hypothetical in nature for you to understand the concept. So we're saying inflation in India is 10% and inflation in the US is 0%. Let's say a Subway sandwich, a Subway sandwich in the US costs $1. So we are saying when there is no inflation, this Subway sandwich is costing $1. Okay. But in India, there is 10% inflation. So when this, when this someone from the US comes to India, and buys this particular sandwich which, which cost him one dollar in the US okay how much should it cost him in India so it should cost him one dollar which is 60 rupees plus it should cost him six more rupees because in India it is going to cost six more rupees because India has 10% inflation so we saying the cost of the same subway sandwich in India is going to be the price in the US plus India inflation I hope you're getting what am I saying. So we're saying the same sandwich which cost in the US $1 will cost in India the same $1 plus 10% because India's inflation is at 10%. So we're saying it'll cost 60 rupees plus 6 rupees which is 10% inflation 6 rupees. So in India the same sandwich is going to cost him 66 rupees. Now please understand what is the real value of the money? The real value of this one dollar is not 60 rupees but 66 rupees because the same product in the US is available for 60 rupees but in India is available for 66 rupees. Hence we call one dollar is equal to 66 rupees as the real effective exchange rate okay so if i have to put this across in a definition what is real effective exchange rate if i have to put that in definition 
real effective exchange rate is nothing but nominal rate plus the inflation okay so we saying one dollar was 60 rupees so when someone bought this sandwich in the US he had to pay one dollar so effectively in Indian rupee he paid 60 but when he wants to buy the same subway sandwich in India he'll have to pay one dollar which is 60 rupees plus he'll have to pay six rupees because in India it is going to cost 66 rupees because India's inflation is higher than US hence effectively a product which was for one dollar okay you've paid 66 rupees hence the real money that you've paid or the real effective exchange rate is one dollar equal to 66 rupees okay now it is not just a concept in India the government actually runs a proper index so there are two indices which monitor the real effective exchange rate in India there is this one index which is pegged against 36 currencies so like you have a dollar index you have a rupee index real effective exchange rate index which is monitored against 36 currencies and then you have another index which is the second index which is monitored against six currencies so what we're doing is we are effectively monitoring the real effective exchange rate of India versus 36 currencies on this first index and then we are monitoring the real exchange rate of the Indian rupee versus these six currencies now how how does the index look like and how do people monitor the index just one quick slide on that so let's say for example in April in April May and June okay the nominal exchange rate that we saw was so I have the data here so let's say it is close to 54.50 in May we saw it was 56.80 and in June we saw was 59.75 so we say that the Indian rupee has depreciated versus the dollar okay now how how does the real effective exchange rate index look like so let's say 36 I'm just taking the data from the sheet that I have and let's say six okay basically the real exchange effective exchange rate index started in 2004 2005 with the base of 100 now if it moves above 100 let's say 107 108 109 that is called rupee appreciation if it falls below 100 let's say 93 94 okay this is called rupee depreciation okay in April this 36 currency versus which the rupee was pegged was trading at 94.9 then in May it came down to 91.5 and then it came down to 89.9 so you see when the nominal exchange rate was depreciating this was also depreciating which was pegged against 36 currencies okay similarly the real exchange rate effective exchange rate versus six currencies was in april trading at 107.3 in may it became 104.1 and in june it was 102.2 which clearly shows that when the nominal exchange rate was depreciating even the real exchange rate pegged against 36 currencies and pegged against 6 currencies both were depreciating I hope the small concept of the difference between what is nominal exchange rate and what is real effective exchange rate is clear you can view the same data on RBI's website because that's where we've taken from thank you so much